So with points and rules changes on the way, which are the 40k units that most need the help from Games Workshop? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about iconic but underpowered units, and we're going to be looking through a popular vote of the top 10 units that you'd most like to see buffed in Warhammer 40k in Games Workshop's upcoming balance update. As we well know now, the Arcs of Omen release is only just around the corner, the book goes up for pre-order on Saturday, and alongside that we're going to be getting the points updates done digitally, plus the new balanced data slate which might well give us some extra rules fixes, potentially for a few things that are better addressed there compared with just messing around with their points. In general, Games Workshop have said that their mission statement is generally to try and keep the factions balanced against each other, but also try and get the units within each faction to be played at least semi-regularly. So things that basically never get taken in any sort of optimised list, they say that in general they'll be looking at those for points reductions or rules boosts. Obviously Warhammer 40k is an absolutely massive game, there's a whole ton of redundant or overshadowed units throughout it as well, and certainly some codexes internal balances are a bit better than others. I feel like there are a few armies where you just want to take a few copies of certain units and then you can dismiss most of the rest fairly comfortably. It's always fun when something iconic gets a rules boost and suddenly becomes actually worth taking again. Though I do feel that with balance updates there is a chance for Games Workshop to put things out of whack as much as they fix, we'll have to see the outcome and the end result. In any case, with all this in mind, I asked you to vote on what your top choices were for rebalancing in Warhammer 40k right now. Bad units that you think that should receive a buff, either in points or rules. Obviously just putting this to a popular vote maybe does lend itself to a few biases, it does mean that more well-known or iconic units will be getting more votes, and if you have codexes that just have, say, one very bad unit in their book, they're likely to attract more votes than other armies, where they've got all sorts of different data sheets that Games Workshop could help out a little bit. Still though, I think it is useful to talk about, it does give us an idea of how Games Workshop might please a whole bunch of their fans, and similar to previous videos we've done like this, we'll focus on just one main unit per faction, though I will include some honourable mentions to start with. Speaking of which, before we get into the top 10, here are just a bunch of units that either weren't the top one in their faction, or the unit that were most voted in their faction, but didn't receive quite enough votes to make it into the top 10. Starting out, we've got three armies that are doing at least fairly well in game at the moment, Leagues of Votan, Tau and Necrons. For the Leagues of Votan, it does really feel like the Brockier Thunderkin are just a small level below most of the other units in the book. Some people still like them, with the ability to put out some cool beam fire but I would say that their firepower just isn't impressive enough considering that you could be getting other units that do the same firepower and are a bit more mobile, things like Sagittors or the Land Fortress potentially. Leagues of Votan are rumoured to be getting some more small points increases as they're still doing rather well. I feel like leaving out the Thunderkin might be a sensible move on Games Workshop's part, at least that will make them a bit better relative to the other units. For the Tau Empire, the Ghost Kill Battlesuit has just felt a touch underwhelming compared with the other choices since the book dropped, not drastically overcosted, and it does have some interesting abilities, you can't shoot it at long distances, and it can put out a surprising amount of melter fire up close. Still though, I feel like compared with other choices, it just either needs a small points decrease, or maybe just gaining the core keyword, either one of those would make it compete better against the other battle suits. Otherwise, Necron Warriors are again a unit that a lot of people would like to see just to be a bit better. Within the Necron Codex at the moment, with that Objective Secure dynasty that they have, everyone seems to like playing that, so it just means that troops aren't particularly special with their Objective Secure that they bring. I feel like Warriors aren't a dreadful unit, to be honest. With Gauss Reapers, the Veil of Darkness, and things like Chronomancers and Resurrection Orbs, they can at least be fairly tanky to take out, but maybe just losing a point off them and Immortals wouldn't be the end of the world. If Games Workshop does drastically rebalance their secondaries, and they get a lot more mundane. I feel like Necrons as a faction might go back to being one in a slightly lower tier place than they are currently, so maybe some small data sheet boosts might not be the worst idea. For some other high voted choices, the Eldar Storm Guardians came up. The Eldar troop section in general is pretty dire, and Storm Guardians really don't stand out. I feel like giving them an extra attack would have been a sensible move in the Codex perhaps, but failing that, making them a bit cheaper wouldn't hurt. For Chaos Demons, while Flamers certainly are ruling the roosts and almost certainly going to be getting a nerf, Nurgle Demons in general are felt to be a bit underpowered. They have been rumoured to be getting a points decrease by those latest leaks that we saw. Finally, for Chaos Space Marines, and I guess you could say this for Space Marine units in general, the vehicles tend to be a little bit lacklustre. One that was mentioned quite a bit that I guess is maybe a bit more iconic than some is the Helldrake. A big scary Chaos Dragon winging its way around the board with a Bale Flamer. 
I think the main issue that that one has is that its damage output just isn't particularly exciting. Maybe it just goes in with Games Workshop's usual issues with balancing flyers. They often tend to be either auto-include or never take options. At the moment, I feel like the Helldrake is just a bit too far south of that line. Maybe a small boost wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we are indeed seeing flyers starting off the board. Finally, for another clutch of units that were voted pretty highly, the Grey Knights Terminators were mentioned. Again, they're one that's just been in bad competition with the Strike Marines ever since their codex dropped. When you can get almost two Strike Marines for the cost of a Terminator, the numbers just aren't in their favour. They've got more firepower, more melee, and I guess technically more psychic casts per point as well. The Terminators have needed a relative decrease to be a bit more effective, I think, for quite a while. For the Drukhari, Witches were mentioned. Probably nothing drastic needed there, but perhaps just an extra point off would make them be a little bit more tempting. They were powerhouse units when the book drops, but now just feel like they're charged at a bit of a premium. I guess perhaps if Armour of Contempt really does go away, then Witches might become a bit more relevant again. AP-1 units are just a bit risky to bring when they might bring nothing to the table compared with AP-0. For the Imperial Guard, the Kaschan Jungle Fighters just really stick out as a terribly balanced unit in the book. For some reason they cost 5 points more than the Cadians, despite being just massively inferior even if they cost the same amount of points. Dropping them down at least to 65 points, if not lower, will probably be sensible. Compared with the Cadians' better ranged options, these guys get locked to flamers and get a bad melee boost as their thing that they get. And I've got no idea why Games Workshop costs them a bit more than the Cadians and the regular infantry squad. Finally, for the Space Marines, we will get on to other units from them later on. But another unit that was voted kind of highly were the Primaris Reavers. Despite being really quite a cheap Space Marine body option now, they're still not taken. Their issue has generally been that they're an Elite's Choice unit that kind of function like a Troop's Choice one, but don't actually have the advantages of getting objective secured or filling troop slots, meaning that in general people just generally take things like Incursors or regular Intercessors instead, and don't even think about these spooky scary Primaris Skull Mask boys. I feel like maybe a rules change to properly amp up the leadership shenanigans even further might be more sensible and try and give them an actual role that is useful as opposed to just dropping their points down to ludicrously low levels. So anyway, that's a few honourable mentions out of the way. Let's get into the list proper. And in 10th place, you guys chose to vote the Tyranid Hormigaunts as a unit to buff. I guess kind of interesting to see a Tyranid's unit on here considering they're so strong right now. Though admittedly it does sound like Games Workshop are going to be hitting them with a the nerf hammer pretty hard to a fair few of their best units. I guess if they do have a lot of their strongest options reined in fairly heavily as was rumoured, a couple of buffs to the weakest bugs in the arsenal might not be the worst. Currently Tyranid Hormigaunts are 8 points per model, you fill them in squads of 10 or more, and in game they're a fast moving objective secured troops choice, moving 10 inches with toughness 3 and a 5 plus save, and they scrabble away with those claws with 3 attacks at strength 3, AP minus 1 and damage 1. In general, within the Codex, I'd say that they're usable, but generally tend to be more used to fill troop slots and then just provide some fast objective secured. They generally aren't tending to be taken as a unit to actually deal any mainline battle damage, and people don't usually tend to run enormous swarms like you might have seen in the past with a crazy amount of melee bogs trying to rush the enemy. Admittedly, this might be just partly to do with which Tyranids are strongest right now. You don't generally tend to see many people running either Gorgon or Hydra, where both of those tend to be a little bit better for these little guys. I feel like perhaps their biggest issue is they just don't really deal all that much damage for the cost. They're only really all that effective against dealing with the lightest infantry that the enemy have to muster. On top of that, they might be fast, but for 8 points per model, toughness 3 and a 5 plus save just really isn't good durability. Anti-infantry weapons are pretty vicious in 40k. If they get exposed, there's a good chance they're just going to get hoovered off the board. Even within their role for cheap objective secured swarms as well, they've got competition from the cheaper termagants and the also fast-moving gargoyles that have fly and don't need to engage in melee. It just means that these guys aren't seen generally too often in Tyranny's list, though they do come up in competitive builds from time to time. To be honest, I don't really think that they're all that far away from where they need to be. Maybe dropping them down from 8 points to 7 points might not be the worst, making swarms a little bit more playable for the Tyranids, and if it goes hand in hand with some nerfs to their better units, you could still probably buff these guys and have Tyranids be a bit more mid-tier overall. I'm not even necessarily sure that these guys are the ones that need the most love out of the Tyranid Codex though. In terms of worst units in the Codex, I feel like the Hive Guard are probably a lot weaker than these guys, but maybe people just want to see swarms and melee bugs be a little bit more viable once more. Moving on from one of the strongest factions in the game to one of the weakest, here we have the Castron Servitors of the Adeptus Mechanicus, perhaps one of the units that epitomises the Court Mechanicus units being a bit worse in the Codex than their Skitari counterparts. 
These guys you can either field as breachers or destroyers, and they're between 35 or 50 points depending on what guns you give them or which type of unit that you field. The Catron Servitors bring you 3 wound toughness 5 bodies with a 6 inch move, they aren't terrible for durability as well or for more battle line troops, in particular the breachers get a 2 plus armour save, though they don't typically gain the benefits of cover or anything due to their biker keyword not being infantry. Then in addition to that, the breaches either get a heavy arc rifle or a torsion cannon paired with a hydraulic claw or arc claw, and the destroyers get a heavier weapon paired with either a flamer or a phosphor gun. Overall, I think it is pretty interesting to see battle line troops with quite such heavy firepower, and I feel like when they get good, they get very, very good, which meant that the previous editions at Mech Breacher Spam really was fairly oppressive. In the latest codex though, I feel their biggest issue is their lack of synergy. They don't have the core keyword, and they aren't Skitari, meaning that the vast majority of the best buffs in the book just aren't an option for them, and it means that they're kind of sidelined compared with the Skitari troops, which are also pretty decent. The leaks for the data slate that came out a little while back had these gaining core, so that would be really quite interesting if that were so. I feel that will put them right back in contention, I feel like they either need that or just a bit of a points decrease to make them more efficient just outright. Either one of those will work I think, their raw firepower at the moment just seems to be done better by either the Skitari troops or the Iron Striders, both of which can gain far more synergies. Otherwise, for the Adeptus Mechanicus units, Belisarius Call and the Castellan Robots were two units that were talked about quite a bit. Units that basically haven't been particularly effective since the Codex came out, and if Games Workshop are going to buff Abmech, it would kind of make sense for those to get a fair bit better. Moving on, in 8th place we have voted the Chaos Knight's Knight Tyrant. Again, within the Codex, this really does feel like one of the weakest data sheets out of the whole bunch of them. 585 points base. And then this one is the Dominus pattern version for Chaos Knights. You either get the Castellan pattern combo with the Volcano Lance and Big Plasma, or the Flamer and Harpoon that the Valiant normally has. I think Games Workshop idea with these was to give them slightly more wounds at 28 wounds and a 2 plus armor save to try and differentiate them, but then these guys maybe have a little bit less synergy with the rest of the codex and just try and get by on raw power alone. I say for the Imperial Knights, the Castellan isn't that far away from doing that. There are some fun shooting combos that you can do with it, even if it isn't regularly taken in competitive lists. For the Chaos Knights though, I just don't think that that's the case. Most of their synergies just don't really work all that well around shooting things. A lot of the codex is geared to melee, besides maybe House of Extrix, which is far better rewarding on spammed war dogs with all those re-rolls as opposed to just one big model. For the raw firepower, you're almost certainly going to be better with its equivalent in spammed ranged war dogs if you want to go that way. And it's locked out of a whole bunch of things like relics, plus all the demon favours cost a lot more on the knight tyrants than they do on other knights. Overall, I feel like these guys are just costed a bit north of what they really need to be. Taking off something like 30 to 40 points, I think, will be pretty reasonable. I'm not sure it would necessarily make them the best knights in the codex or anything like that, but be a bit less punishing for people who want to take these guys along. I guess they will maybe have a small boost in the Arcs of Omen detachment, meaning that they will be able to take these a bit more freely than previously, before certain combos of these would potentially mess up your knight lances rules, so I guess that is something. In a similar sort of vein, I feel like the Knight Valiant in Codex Imperial Knights could do with a buff. It just doesn't really quite bring enough raw damage to the table for the amount that it costs, and the fact that it needs to get really quite close compared with the Castellan, so you're almost certainly better off taking the longer ranged anti-tank version if you want a Dominus. Moving on to the Gene Stealer Colts next, and I feel like the Aberrants are again another fairly standout, underwhelming unit within their Codex, a Codex that in general most of the units do have a decent role in if you want to field them. Aberrants are currently 30 points per model, and in theory they're supposed to be some of the heavy lifters of the Gene Stealer Cult, the true anti-tank melee unit, and be at least fairly tough to kill as well, getting 3 wounds at toughness 5, with a 5 plus save and minus 1 damage. I feel that the new version of their book maybe had them just be a bit underpowered though. They really did have some fairly ridiculous melee threats when they first dropped in the previous book, but now each one only has a base 2 attacks with strength 8, AP minus 2, and damage 3. It's not awful, but it's just not particularly good for 30 points. They are admittedly maybe a little bit better in Twisted Helix, and potentially with things like the Biophages Enhancement for the Feel No Pain, or the Abominant to make them hit better, or particularly the plus 1 attack Psychic Power, which means that their 2 attacks get stretched a little bit further. Again, I feel like with quite a few units on this list, you would have the option of either buffing their points, or maybe giving them core to allow them more synergies. Currently Games Workshop chose not to give them core, 
basically maybe to focus on their synergies with the biophages and the abominant. At the moment, at least for 30 points per model though, I feel they're pretty much flat out competed by the acolytes with the heavy rock weapons if you do want to kill some vehicles in close. They're a bit less survivable than the aberrants, but they can take better buffs, and I'd say that they arguably hit harder for the points as well once you've included all the attacks on the basic guys too. Filling troop slots and having objectives secured as well is certainly another advantage for the acolytes. From the rumours it sounded like Games Workshop were going to go the route of reducing points for these guys as opposed to giving them core. I feel like to be honest that might well be the better route to go with. It means that if you want to support these guys then the Biophagus and the Abominant do have a bit more of a role. Compared with making them core makes them just feel a bit more like the other units in the codex just with different stats. I feel like these guys just bringing a lot of raw power but maybe just a little bit less synergy might be the best way for them. Maybe dropping down something like 3 points to 27 points I think will make them a lot more interesting and they get really good if they dropped further than that. Moving on to the Undying Legions, and in 6th place we've got some Necron Doomsday technology with the Doomstalkers and the Doomsday Arcs. Both of these received a lot of votes, and despite looking rather different in terms of units, they basically do almost exactly the same thing. Mount some Doomsday weapons and a few Gauss Flayers, just on different platforms. The Canoptic Doomstalker is 130 points, and the Arc is 160 points, and at least in terms of competitive play, I'd say that the Arc is well worth the upgrade by a long way. You get more wounds and quantum shielding on the arc, a ballistic skill of 3+, plus, far more gauss flares, better movement speed, and also the core keyword which for some reason the doomstalker lacks at the moment. It is kind of interesting that I definitely see more doomstalkers in play on the tabletop normally though, I think that this is literally just because people prefer the kit so much. The doomstalker kit does look very very cool indeed I think. Plus the doomsday arc has the additional disincentive that it's a bit of a fiddly kit to build, so I feel like if the efficiency trade-off isn't that huge, people prefer to play Doomstalkers if they can. As for what they bring to the table, they both bring Doomsday weapons, D6 shots at strength 10, AP-5 and damage D6, blast, but they only get to fire at that increased profile if they don't move at all, if they move they're hitting far less powerfully. On paper these weapons don't have a terrible damage output, but they do have some really big disadvantages. The first is that not being able to move, which is kind of killer in 9th edition. You generally want to be moving your units around terrain, gaining lines of sight, moving up to objectives, or keeping in character buffing range, and having them forced to be static is generally pretty annoying, unless you're playing on a table with very low terrain where you know you're going to be able to get line of sight on things. The other big thing is their swinginess though. D6 shots means that it's very easy just to roll that dreaded 1, and the same for the damage characteristic, which means that you've got two chances for the thing to do almost nothing at all. Every so often if you roll well, they can just absolutely obliterate a vehicle in a single round of shooting, but often they might just roll massively and overkill their target, when only a little bit of damage output would have been equally fine. I'd say the gun issues are the main problem for them, they're not terrible in terms of durability, the Doomstalker with its 4 plus invul, or the Ark with all of its Gauss flares, the 5 plus invul and transhuman, Perhaps the other major issue of the Doomstalker is that it's one of the few Necron units not to pick up the core keyword, falling into a niche that isn't a vehicle or an infantry unit. I feel that you certainly could just decrease the points on these a bit more, make them a bit more efficient, but one of the things that's been an often request of Necron players since their codex came out will be to change the weapons to have something like a damage D3 plus 3 or something, even if it meant a higher points cost. Perhaps they just feel like weapons that were written earlier in the edition, compared with units that were written later, they got some massively more powerful rules in terms of weapon profiles. Moving on, and in 5th place, we have the Intercessors and Tactical Marines, Space Marine troops in general being another particular area that was voted pretty highly. To be honest, within the vote, an awful lot of Space Marine units were mentioned, lots of them just feel kind of underwhelming, and they feel like an underwhelming codex generally at the moment. I feel like if Space Marine players had all focused on maybe just a one or two units they really wanted buffing, they'd probably rank towards the top of this list. So I think there is some element of splitting the votes between all the various different Primaris units that aren't particularly good, and the same with the Space Marine vehicles. I guess perhaps the troops that were voted the highest as their pretty iconic units, it just feels kind of sad in Warhammer 40k where a standard Space Marine with a bolter just isn't enormously effective in game, rather than the paragons of the battle line that they're supposed to be. In terms of what they bring to the board, the tactical marines I'd say are by far the worst of the two. They're 18 points compared with the intercessors 20. The intercessors are played far more in competitive lists, though admittedly even they are often supplanted by things like incursors that can forward deploy for just one point more, and space marine lists in general often just fill the bare minimum of troops choices, again implying that they'd ideally not be taking that at all if detachment rules allowed, which might well change things up in arcs of omen. What the troops bring to the board are two wounds with a toughness 4 and a 3 plus save and armour of contempt, 
Not terrible durability, but there's just a lot of things in Ninth Edition that deal with that profile very effectively. Lots of things with decent AP and damage too these days. It doesn't sound like durability is going to be getting any better for them though. Even if they do get a points decrease, then losing Armor of Contempt is probably going to be a big deal for them. And I feel like they need a fairly hefty points boost to be considered that much if they are going to get a lot easier to kill. Otherwise, for the two units, the Tactical Marines are a bit more niche, I think. Generally, the most effective way to field them, I'd argue, is small units with a heavy weapon. It means that you can camp them in the backfield and blaze away a few quality shots like a Grav Cannon or Laz Cannon. They're just a bit less efficient for other units for other roles like jumping in drop pods, which you could do with Stern Guard. The Intercessors, I think, are a fair bit more playable. They get three-shot bolters with those auto-bolt rifles if you want them, better melee with more attacks, and a couple of really useful stratagems such as transhuman physiology and double shooting if you just need an extra little burst of fire. Overall, I think that the Tactical Marines need more help than the Intercessors, and should receive a bigger points drop if that's the way that Games Workshop's going to go about it, but currently in 40k, Space Marines in general are just fairly underpowered, and supposedly they're going to be getting some fairly hefty points drops across the board when the updates come out. Moving onwards, and another couple of units that I feel have a very similar issue are the Custodians Alaris Terminators and the Custodian Wardens. The Elite's choice of the Custodians that Games Workshop kind of made pretty redundant within their own codex when they changed the Custodians Objective Secured rules. Currently, the Wardens are 50 points and the Terminators are 60, and both of them, I think, are at least reasonably well balanced with the standard Custodian Guard for the things that they bring to the table for their respective points costs. Like the Custodian Guard, their big tanky elite bodies with toughness 5, a 2 plus save, a 4 plus invul, and some damage to power weapons in combat. The Wardens get a feel no pain type save and an extra attack, plus they can protect characters just a little bit better. And the Alaris Terminators get a fairly savage grenade launcher, plus an extra wound deep strike and the ability to take small units, or take a big one and split them up into a whole load of little ones with Unleash the Lions. Generally, I think the only thing that's really holding them back too much is the fact that they lost the objective secured compared with the troops, and this usually just means that people want to take Sagittarum Custodians or the standard Custodian Guard instead of them. The extra data sheet benefits do add a bit, but often not quite as much as taking an objective rather than losing it. I feel like when Games Workshop took objective secured away from the majority of Custodians units, it was perhaps to just stop things like characters jumping on objectives and snagging an objective that way. And I'm not sure it would be the end of the world if they gave it back to these guys. It would probably make them more playable without really making a Custodians army particularly any stronger, just a little bit better balanced overall. Custodians are kind of doing okay right now in terms of win rates and tournament performance and things, maybe quite heavily carried by Forge World Dreadnoughts and Caladius tanks, admittedly. But despite that, I think that you could have a few more diverse Custodians armies if you gave these back objective secures, without necessarily making them the strongest faction in the game or anything like that. Voted in third place, we've got Flash Gits for Orcs, Piratical Orcs with some shooty snaz guns. These guys are a heavy support's choice within the Codex for 25 points per model, and they're basically Orc knobs, but with bigger shootier guns, hitting on a 4 plus with their Git finders, and firing out 3 shots at heavy 3, 24 inches. Strength 6, AP minus 2, and damage 2. Durability wise, they're kind of okay with toughness 5, 2 wounds, and a 4 plus save. Not enormously standout though, and perhaps in the slightly unfortunate position of both anti infantry and anti vehicle fire, both being fairly happy to shoot at them. I'd say perhaps the single biggest draw to the units is that they've got a 2 CP stratagem for showing off. They get to shoot again, but must target the closest unit. And admittedly, that could be fairly punchy if you have it on a big unit of them, even though I would argue that their firepower per point isn't enormously exciting. I guess they also get a little bit better with the freebooters shooting buff as well. If they can get a plus one to hit for them, then that's all very well and good. I say in general though, their main issue is the fact that their guns are a heavy weapon profile and not, say, an assault weapon. It means that if you move them at all, their ballistic skill drops down to 5+, plus, meaning that for each one 25-point model, you're only averaging one strength 6, AP minus 2, and damage 2 hit on the foe. It's not awful, but against a bunch of targets, it's just not going to be great. Most vehicles won't care about it enormously, particularly not anything with a damage minus 1 on it. The stratagem isn't bad either, but 2 command points is quite a lot to invest. Sometimes it's going to be worth it, sometimes it might genuinely be better to save that and use it elsewhere. There are other good stratagems in the Orc Codex, or even just saving it to auto-pass morale or something. On top of that, they're not a core unit, so get even more limited buffs than most orcs, not that there's enormous amounts going around for shooting, and in general they again feel like a datasheet that just needs a little bit more raw power. Dropping them an extra few points I really don't think would be the worst idea. Otherwise, for orcs, there were a few other units mentioned. The Lords of War are fairly underwhelming, the Stomper, the Gorkonaut, and the Morkonaut, plus orc knobs in general don't compete amazingly well with the boys, despite supposedly being the Shock Elite. 
Moving on and voted into second place, we've got Magnus the Red of the Thousand Sons, a 420 point Lord of War Demon Primarch, though unfortunately kind of rarely taken in competitive Thousand Sons lists, even though he got a fairly decent points boost, dropping down to 420 points at the last balance pass. I feel like Magnus is in maybe just a little bit of a strange situation. He does bring enough threat to the table for the cost, I think. It's just more the case of can he survive to deliver it or not. It does have 18 wounds, toughness 7, a 4 plus inbor save, and minus 1 damage. But despite all that, when he costs 420 points, that isn't actually that great durability for the cost. And if the enemy can focus him down with a crazy amount of heavy weapons, then you've just lost a very big chunk of your army turn 1, potentially. The other issue that he has is that he's 18 wounds, and that means that he can't hide behind obscuring terrain like other things can. So again, if your opponent does have a whole load of long-range firepower on some tables, you're just not going to be able to hide him whatsoever, and you're almost guaranteed to have him gunned down. In terms of other threats, though, he does bring a fair bit. 8 attacks at strength 16, AP minus 4, and damage 3 is going to mess most normal units up in melee, plus a 16-inch movement to get him there. Of course, his psyche is pretty much his main thing, his big super smite with a whole bunch of mortal wounds, plus he knows all the powers of the Thousand Suns and almost guarantees he's going to be able to cast them with his huge casting buffs and rerolls, plus he does give you some rerolls to nearby Thousand Suns units as well. Really though, with his durability being what it is, it does mean that he probably needs to be a bit cheaper if people are going to run him regularly, otherwise people are just going to invest in more Thousand Suns rubrics and Scarab Occult Terminators, and just pile more durable rubrique onto the objectives. I feel like he could probably have another medium sized points cut, and then just be a bit more viable for lists. I guess if we're looking elsewhere in the Thousand Suns Codex for their unique units, things like the Zangors or the Mushlith Vortex Beast could be other options for going down a touch. Plus most of their motor pool as well, as with a lot of other Chaos units, I would say it might be a bit more important to get their more unique and flavourable units right, compared with making them any sort of weird armoured army. Finally, and voted in first place by you guys, were the Dark Reapers of the Craftworld Eldar. And again, I would agree that these guys are just a little bit badly balanced within their codex, kind of obvious from when the codex came out, though I'm maybe just a little bit surprised that they actually top out this list, beating out a lot of the other units that people have complained about quite a bit. I guess maybe it's just a bit sad to see some shiny new models for the army just be kind of underwhelming, particularly when they were one of the biggest and most competitive units for the Eldar in the previous book. I think perhaps for that reason, Games Workshop were just a little bit hesitant as to giving them any sort of power boost, in fact, they arguably got a fair few nerfs going into the new Codex Eldari. Currently, the Dark Reapers are 150 points for a unit of 5, you can take no more, no less now, and a 5 model unit with toughness 3 and a 3 plus save. Even with the Exarch having extra wounds, that still makes for a very fragile unit at 30 points per model, essentially. The Reaper launchers are quite generalist, either two shots at strength 5 and damage 2, or a single shot at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 3, ignoring dense cover, so won't be taking hit modifiers against that. Though they did lose their rule where they ignore modifiers in general, and that was really quite a powerful asset to them, particularly for moving and firing. Otherwise, they are kind of interesting for the Exarch's unique powers. You can have the Exarch themselves hitting a fair bit more powerfully, and they do get on okay with Farseer buffs, I quite like Fortune. Unfortunately though, just compared with their previous version, they do have a lot of downsides. They can't battle focus, which means that you can't jump shoot jump with them. Admittedly, that might have the power to take them from a bad unit to really quite a good one, as there'd be yet another unit you could potentially have hiding towards the back of your army, firing off a bit of fire, and then hiding behind terrain. I guess the idea would just be to peek around the edge of it, gain some marginal lines of sight, and use the battle focus movement to stay safe without necessarily going into the area terrain itself. I can see why Games Workshop chose not to give them that, but it does mean that as a result, they're generally just going to be out in the open. Even if they're hiding in light cover or something, it still means that you're going to be able to shoot them back, and both small arms fire and anti-tank fire is going to be pretty painful, when each toughness 3 one wound model that you lose costs a big 30 points. They could stay safe with fire and fade I suppose, but that's cost 2 CP. It's not very efficient on a 5 model unit, and you can only do it once per game. Other disadvantages are that unless you take a specific Exarch power, then you're likely going to be wanting to hide them out of line of sight, and then move them to shoot, and Dark Reapers do now take the move and shoot penalty, so they'll be hitting on 4s. And for the Farseer buffs and things, now that they are only takeable in a 5 model unit, they just aren't quite as effective for things like Guide or Fortune, which were a lot better when they could have been applied to 10 models strong. I feel that when compared with the other Aspect Warriors, Dark Reapers just come off second best. I feel like at the least you could give the squad a 10 points discount or something like that. Could probably even go a bit further if you wanted them to actually genuinely be quite good. So anyway, there we have it. A quick talk through some of the units that you most want to see buffed out of the various armies in Warhammer 40k. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and are there any other deserving units that need a lift somewhere in your codex?
If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to check out the counterpart video for this, the 10 units that people most want to see toned down and feel are a bit overpowered in Warhammer 40k right now. I'll leave a link to that down in the video description. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description also. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. Making all these videos does take a fair amount of time and effort to make, so if you are enjoying, any support is enormously appreciated. Check out the link in the video description if you want to give it a look. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.